Hello, I'm Bernie Hayes. Today we'll be talking about transparency and responsibility in the law enforcement agency with Sister Maxine Johnson today on The Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. My guest is Sister Maxine Johnson. Ms. Johnson, how are you? Minister Johnson, how I'm are you? I'm blessed doing? and highly favored. Glad to be, I'm honored to be here today. Oh, it's so nice to see you again. It's so nice to talk to you again. Minister Maxine Johnson, mm -hmm. tell me about the ministry. Well, you know what? I became born again about 39 years ago. God arrested me and made me a willful servant of his, and I can't help it now to just... Uh, Proclaim the good news, the Great Commission, asking, you know, calling people to repent and come to Christ and totally surrender and uh, look for healing and deliverance emotionally, physically and psychologically. OK. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you, you minister of health and also. Yes, I, I'm a, a minister, medical. I'm a, I'm a medical missionary. Uh -huh. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Evansville, Indiana, and I'm a certified health coach. So I deal with the spirit and the body because too many people in the church are sick. And we just want them. The Bible said in Ezekiel that the leaves on the trees be for healing. And I love to see people wail. OK, I want you to uh, tell us about the difference in uh, on us, the organization that you're talking about today and that, that you're uh, the outreach person for. What is on us? On us is uh, O.M.U.S. Onus Incorporation is a non for profit uh, organization, 501C4. I mean, we deal mostly with, we write policy, well, propose legislations, raise awareness, uh, dealing with national legislation on policing. It's a non for profit, it's public policy, meaning churches and organizations can promote uh, legislations that we write because it's not a conflict with the law. You're not promoting a candidate. But you can't support it because it's considered public policy, just like Civil Rights Act. Mm -hmm. And also there's another organization called Eurlea. Uh, what is that? Well, uh, actually, Eurlea is the, the national proposed legislation that uh, our president, Gerald Sanders, is J-E-R-R-O-L-L, -L, Sanders.com. That's a female. That's a female. Oh, yes. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Gerald Sanders is, uh, is a corporate strategist. Uh, that's what she's done her whole life. And um, she wrote URLEA, which stands for Uniform Reporting Law Enforcement Improvement Act. And the short name for that is called Equality in Policing Act. And she's written diversity policies for, for companies like AT&T, Anheuser-Busch, Enterprise, and several companies across the country. Um, also, she wrote a book called uh, The Physics of Money. If you have my dollar, I don't. And you can go to her Facebook page, uh, Gerald Sanders, J-E-R-R-O-L-L -L Sanders, and you can follow. Uh, she deals with strategy and getting to the root of the problem so we can come up with a solution. So uh, Eura Leo was birthed out of Ferguson in uh, 2014, I believe. Right. And mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. she wrote uh, Eura Leo, Uniform Reporting Law Enforcement Improvement Act. She said uh, sometimes we have problems that seem like it's too big to fix. And, but that's her specialty and that's her gift, and it's an honor to work with her. So that's what Eurelia is, or Equality and Policing Act. Okay, we'll come back to Eurelia now. Let's talk about On Us. How did that come about and why? Well, um, Gerald Sanders um, created that organization. You know, she's a mastermind of, uh, she's, a, uh, she's a businesswoman. She's the CEO of Onus Inc. And uh, mm -hmm. it came about because, you know, she wanted to solve the problems that we have dealing with uh, um, the, the relationship between policing and the public restoring that trust. And uh, she knew that in order for that to happen, she had to create a solution uh, dealing with transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. So it's a not-for-profit program uh, organization. It's 501, 501C4 instead of a C3. Mm -hmm. And we deal strictly with advocacy and policy. And we do work with college students who major in journalism, criminal justice, uh, uh, public policy, you know, uh, so welcome them on board. But that's why it was created, so she can be able to uh, solve some of our problems that we're having mm -hmm. right now. 
And you being outreach coordinator, what is, what is your responsibility? My responsibility is to be the horn to Miss Sanders. And I, I, what I do is I do all the most of 90 percent of recruiting. I bring to the table the things that Miss Sanders need. If it's administration, if it's a public, you know, uh, elected officials, business owners, clergy people, um, um, like sororities, fraternities, uh, other org- not for profit organizations. My job is to bring uh, the glue together so the organization can work cohesively and collaborate with other organizations. So mm. I'm on the f- ground all the time recruiting, promoting, and being the voice. And I always tell her, I am nothing without her, and she says I'm nothing. With, you know, we both need each other. You've been pretty successful at that? Yes. I believe it's a gift probably from the womb. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. You know, we have a, a fly here that uh, you brought us. It's called uh, You're really a Transparency. And the first page is on support, a national law to stop police killings. And I, I guess with the recent uh, everything, so many different killings of black men in, in the news, that this is right on time. The first one, it says, uh, creates a national pattern or practice data bank that called POP. Uh, what does POP mean? Uh, pa- uh, pattern of, uh, it's called pattern of practices. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are in law enforcement are familiar with that term. And so we would expand the, the spectrum of pattern of uh, practices. I mean, we would set a database up to track all activity of law enforcement on the ground and the penal system, the juvenile system, child protective services uh, all over the country. Because if you don't have eyes and you cannot track the activities, then you don't, you're not able to correct the problems that's going on. Like we had downtown at the city jail, they was talking about you know, being hot, being un- un- unlivable conditions. Well, because there's no way of tracking. Well, mm-hmm. POP would, set, would solve that problem. So there would be a database established where uh, all day, all day long, uh, every minute, every second, every activity, law enforcement, um, uh, security guards, police officers, they would have to uh, log into this database every incident. Like if I get stopped for a ticket, they go immediately into the database, di- uh, di- you know, track what happened. And then the person who's the uh, a victim or a, a person who got stopped, they will be able to go right into that same system with their ticket and you can track what's going on. And when you can track what's going on, you can identify problem police officers, those that have not been psychologically evaluated. You can see the pattern. If it's a pattern of using a chokehold, then you can eliminate the problem, make sure those police officers are never a police officer in anywhere in the state or in the country. Mm. And this was created long before the George Floyd incident in Minnesota. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This was birthed out of the uh, Ferguson movement. Yeah. Yeah, Miss Sandler was right on the ground. Matter of fact, that's where she and I met, and uh, uh, we began to work together. We've been working relentlessly for over six years because we both have children, and we just know that uh, we've got to protect the next generation, the next generation. Unless this problem is corrected, we're going to continue to see corrupt police officers getting away because they have no way of tracking and able to cover up what they're doing. But you and Leah, with the pattern and practice, are going to expose all that, bring transparency and accountability. Mm-hmm. And the transparency page, it says, uh, tracks the individual actions of every law enforcement agent in the nation. and also says tracks the race, gender, and age of every person who is the subject of a law enforcement incident or action. So this is pretty extensive, is it not, Maxine? Yes, and that's why we know it has to be national, not just a black issue. Even mm-hmm. though we know that black people are targeted uh, more at a, at, a, at a faster rate, but this is a country issue, and this is for everybody. Yes, it will, gender, race, it will give us all the data in research. If you don't have the data, you cannot solve the problem. So, yeah, gender, race, location, everything. So it's phenomenal how she was able to create this over six years ago. We've traveled the country for six years. Uh, we sent it to all the Congress, every organization you can think of and name of it. So us being on your TV show is phenomenal. We're asking people to go to that website, changesonus.org, or call us at 202-817-1331. Okay. Get involved. What's that again? The, the uh, website and yeah, the phone info number? Info at changesonus.org. Or call us at 202-817-1331. Or go to our Facebook page, on us, Or go to Gerald Sanders' page, J-E-R-R-O-L-L Sanders. Or go to our YouTube channel. And uh, we welcome you. Are you satisfied with the progress you're making? 
Absolutely. Yeah, we are as satisfied with what we have done, um, but we are looking at collaboration. That's what it's been a break with the pro, with the protesters and our organizations and other organizations. We're looking to merge that together. That's the missing link at this moment. Mm-hmm. And so we're hoping to bring them together because we're asking and demanding a congressional hearing. This mm-hmm. problem has got to be solved. And I believe God has blessed Ms. Sanders with the ability, the withal, and the skills as a corporate strategist to fix this problem with other organization leaders. Mm-hmm. Sister Maxine Johnson is our guest. She's with Act Us. Um, it's on us. And we'll be talking about uh, your Leah when we come back after this break. I'm Bernie Haynes, and we'll be right back with Maxine Johnson. Have you ever wondered what it's like to sleep on the streets? Well, we have a special event coming up for you. If you want to participate in a safe place, uh, your own home. See, we are going to be doing a night out with the homeless, a virtual online event. We're taking this historical event that we do in New Life and making it accessible for you and your family to participate along with us. And so on October 22nd, we will be gathering together online through Facebook and through YouTube to virtually experience what it's like to be sleeping on the streets of St. Louis. You pitch a tent in your living room, outside, anywhere where it's, it's comfortable, but the point is that you take a step away from what's normal to sleep in solidarity for the homeless. I'm really, really excited about this event, and I want you to participate. So register online, and you can make a difference by educating your family and your friends about the plight of so many men and women on the streets of St. Louis. This is a virtual online event. You register, you receive a t-shirt, a wristband, educational material about homelessness, and then you spend the night out with us on October 22nd, whether that be in your backyard, at your church, uh, in your living room, it doesn't matter. The point is that you are, are stepping out in solidarity with the homeless on that ev- evening. We're so excited for this event, and we would love you to participate with us. Please join alongside us as we recognize our brothers and sisters in Christ who are suffering on the streets Thank you. Welcome back. My guest is Sister Maxine Johnson. She's outreach coordinator for On Us. And we're talking about an organization called Your Leah. And um, it's Uniform Reporting Law Enforcement Improvement Act. Uh, Sister Johnson, uh, before we went to break, there's one more thing I want to ask you about. On the transparency side, it says, you would deputize licensed attorneys and give them the power to act on behalf of Department of Justice to prosecute abusive law enforcement agencies and agents. Is it easy to deputize attorneys with that? Do you think that's going to fly? I believe anything is possible, but it mm-hmm. has to be written into the law and organized. And we believe through our research that has to happen because at this moment, the DOJ only have 18,000 agencies throughout the whole United States. As you see, that's not enough. Then they only come on the ground after a person is dead. And we believe with the uh, DOJ, the Department of Justice, having the ability, written in their policies, to deputize attorneys, it would, bro- it would broaden the spectrum where the needs, where we, those uh, law enforcement operating as investigators can get out on the ground before someone is murdered. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we think that that's possible. That's preventive then. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. And this is national proposed legislation. Right. Yes. On the other side of the flyer that you brought us, it says... Uh, This is the accountability part, part two, the accountability we demand imposes upon law enforcement agents an obligation to preserve life and prevent injury during policing and hands over control of the entire investigative process following an officer involved killing to an independent investigative team selected by the family from the state wide website. Tell us about that. Yeah, and this is another, um, actually, uh, Euralia is a national legislation that will literally restructure policing the way it exists in America. And those are items that you listed, uh, uh, demanding, requiring that these law enforcement uh, are committed to protect and serve. 
Because at this moment, the trust has been destroyed. Uh, the powers have been switched instead of the law enforcement. Well, at least the public believe instead of them protecting and serving, they feel like they have the authority, they have the power, so it's their game. So this would reverse it back to the initial reason why we even had law enforcement on the ground. So we're going back to restore the initial purpose of what law enforcement there to to protect and serve, you know, and that's what. And then, like you said, the individual families would be able to hire their own private investigators and the, instead of the prosecutor taking over the case and. Um, like you say, it would change everything, uh, make it, uh, restoring this trust and the safety into the community. And also back in 1985, if you're familiar with the Tennessee versus Gardner's case, that was passed out of the U.S. Supreme Court where it said it's illegal to shoot a fleeing felony or a person running from the scene. Well, once something yeah. passed from the uh, U.S. Supreme Court, it becomes law all over. Well, every state has not adopted that U.S. Supreme ruling, Supreme Court ruling. So uh, as a uh, uh, you or Leah or Equality and Policing Act become law, we'll be able to enforce uh, the decision of the Supreme Court with the Tennessee versus Gardner. How how's the, the act coming? How, is it is it receiving positive reaction from the Senate or the House of Representatives? Say U.S. government itself. Well, we believe they know about it uh, because we did lobby uh, uh, Washington D.C. Uh, several times, and so we do know they are aware of it. And we need the people of the public to call the congressional members and put some pressure behind them. Because right now, you know, you've got the George Floyd Act and the AP News said the George Floyd Act will leave thousands of corrupt law enforcement on the ground because it doesn't have the heartbeat and the, and, and the detailed answer to policing as uh, you or Leah. So we need people to call Washington, D.C. and demand the congressional members accept and adopt the policies of that's in of the proposed legislation that's in your Leah. Mm -hmm. So we believe um, they know about it, uh, but we need numbers. We need people to call and make sure they be our voice. And we want this to be the decision of the people, not the elected officials and not the uh, powers to be. Mm -hmm. Not to put you on the spot, but uh, Congresswoman Cori Bush, is she supporting you or have you contacted her? And what's her well, position? I, I have spoken to her several times mm -hmm. on the on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, I have reached out to her and I'm still waiting for that call. But okay. of course, we would love everyone to contact our congressional member, Cori Bush, and we'd love to meet with her. And, and, and like I said, she can, uh, we definitely want a congressional hearing and we definitely want her to get behind you or Leo. Sure. You know, you know, Minister Maxine Johnson, you could have done anything in the world that you wanted to do. You're a minister, you're a businesswoman, you're a college graduate, and you, you, you're in health care. And you could do any of those things, but yet and still you're putting yourself on the line, you marched, you, you, you preached uh, for justice. Why? What, what motivates you to do that? Well, the Bible says that if you know of something that's wrong and you don't say and do anything about it, or in Ezekiel again, the blood is on your hand. And I believe... Uh, uh, me doing this and partnering with the uh, ONIS organization, if, unless we have the infrastructure of us being protected and safe through policing, then anything else we do will crumble because they have the ability to come and false, falsely report you or uh, knock your door in, no knock and all that. So that's why I feel like I believe that I have got to stay the course on this here. I take Jesus with me everywhere I go. You know that mm -hmm. because uh, only he can really fix the heart. But I do this because it is imperative. It's critical to restructure policing. Right now, policing is held accountable to their own state. And Eurelia has restructured that just like with our taxes and our, biz our businesses. Once Eurelia is, is in place or Equality and Policing Act is in place, that every state will be held accountable to the Attorney General in Washington, D.C. That's why this is critical. So, yeah, I, I have no other choice but to do this. I understand your daughter is following in your footsteps. Tell us a little bit about her. <laughs> yes, her name is Dr. Maxine Davis.com. She's a professor at Rutgers University. She was just published in the Nature Magazine uh, article. They did an editorial on her where she talked about racism at the University of Texas 
in the academia field and uh, how that area needs to be investigated. And she just got an article published in Dallas News about why black professors are not uh, uh, making tenure. So this racism and this biasness against one group of people, a uh, cultural group of people, such as ourselves, uh, black people, African-American people, it's, it's, uh, it's indebted and it's uh, interwoven in every entity of the United States of America. So we believe, like I said, so she's on the front line. She's been marching at UTA. You can pull her up on Facebook. She's a little rebel. And I I was on the phone with her this morning about one o'clock encouraging her. We all have an assignment from God. Some do this, some do that. And I told you, you have an assignment. God has raised her up to be a voice, to be bold and not to be afraid. And she's not afraid. She graduated from Wash U. And of course, she's my daughter and she loved the Lord. So I'm proud of her. And she's definitely is out there uh, exposing wickedness in high places, trying to make a change. That bloodline is strong, is it not? Yes, it is. <laughs> Praise the and Lord. how can we reach you again? Tell us how we can reach you. Um, they can contact us at the organization at 202-817-1331, or they can email us at info at changesonus.org, or they can go to our YouTube channel, Onus Inc., or they can uh, go to... Uh, Facebook page. If you go to Ms. Gerald Sanders page, J-E-R-R-O-L-L Sanders, you'll see we have a um, YouTube. Uh, it's called Go Live Against Rogue Policing National Panel uh, Review. She compares the George Floyd Act, the Breathe Act, and uh, the Equality Policing Act and why we must get this into law. So yeah, they can go to the that uh, email address or they can call us at that number. We're definitely looking for students that major in journalism if they want some experience or a major in criminal justice or public policy. Ms. Sanders has the, and I believe uh, we, us working together, we're going to train you and, mm -hmm. and we'll help you to be committed to the cause and bring change. You can add that to your resume. Okay, Sanders is spelled S-A-N-D-E-R-S? -E yes, sir, it is. Okay, and we'll be right back with Minister Maxine Johnson after this. So many people are being left on the streets homeless all day long without anywhere to go because downtown St. Louis continues to fight efforts to reopen 1411 Locust. Yes, the downtown neighborhood organization that has continued to fight the New Life Evangelistic Center for the reopening of 1411 Locust and lobbied the Slay administration, the Cruzison administration to keep it closed and close it down must be strongly resisted at this particular time. We have a new mayor. I believe she cares about the homeless. Tashara Jones needs our support. And if downtown St. Louis is going to resist her efforts to reopen 1411 Locust, then we have to call for a boycott of downtown St. Louis. And that's why I'm asking the Burning Hayes viewers to please consider doing such. If you'll join me in prayer over this, if you'll join me in resisting these special interest groups, if you want to believe the time for action is now, please contact me. I'm Larry Rice at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, 63166. You can call me at 314-421-3020. I thank God for faithful viewers of Bernie Hayes, and now the time for action has come. Our subject for today is Woody Strode, an athlete turned actor. Strode was a top Nazi Catholic and a football star at UCLA. He appeared in four John Ford motion pictures. He has also appeared in four films that have been selected by the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. The Ten Commandments, Spartacus, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, and Once Upon a Time in the West. Reportedly, his favorite film was Sergeant Rutledge, which was recorded in 1960. Strode was one of the first four blacks who integrated professional football in 1946. Woody played for the Los Angeles Rams after their move from Cleveland. He was also a professional wrestler. Woody Strode had strong African and Native American ancestry. He was Cree and Blackfoot on his father's side and Cherokee on his mother's. He died December 31st, 1994 of lung cancer. Woody Strode. The Bernie Hayes program is uh, produced at NLEC TV uh, right here at 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. It's our new headquarters since they closed the 1411 Locust building. We're working to get back into that building. In addition to that, trying to help so many people through a wide variety of safe houses, training programs, transportation assistance, so many ways people are getting help because of all of you that are supporting the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. Now, if you'll send a gift of $25 or more, we want to send you this special, the Bernie Hayes Show Cup. And we're giving that to people. It's just a way of saying thank you. So when you send your gift, request a cup. We'll be happy to get it off to you. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. You can give online at nlecstl.org. Now I'm really asking all of you to 
join us in praying. The needs are so phenomenal at this particular time. So many hurting and homeless people are contacting us daily, but we're able to help them because of each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing at this time. Tell your families and friends about NLEC TV and get directly involved yourself. And welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. My guest is Sister Maxine Johnson. She's outreach coordinator for On Us. And uh, Ms. Johnson, I understand there's an economic program that you want to talk about. Yes, uh, Ms. Sanders has, is getting ready to launch uh, a whole complete course, how to start up your own business, understand what uh, acquisitions are, you know, uh, how to take your business from one level to another. But if you want to know about that, you can go to the website. The website is called for, F-O-R, Chief Executives.com. F-O-R, Executives. For Chief Executives.com because we know at the end of the day you got to eat. So she's going to train you and teach you how to start your own business, what acquisitions are, and uh, just uh, help you economically be empowered. Well, could we just email you or get the phone number that we have for you to tell us about that particular program? Absolutely. And we definitely want to get students, you know, any students who are looking for experience in writing or uh, in administrative experience or either outreach, please contact us at 202-817-1331, 202-817-1331, or email us at info at changesowners.org. And uh, we would love to have you on board. If you're connected with organizations nationwide who are looking for an uh, organization that has integrity, go to our website, see what we've done. I always tell people our work speaks for itself. You won't be disappointed. You will be empowered, and you will see change. And I always say protest without policy equals the same thing. We want to change. We want to stop the killing and make sure transparency and accountability are taking place and get these police officers off the street who need uh, psychological evaluations and make sure DOJ expand the horizon by bringing on, uh, deputizing some attorney general, some law enforcement. I mean, uh, I can't let you go without telling you about the support that you've always given Reverend Larry Rice and the New Life Evangelistic Center and your support for and advocacy for uh, homeless people. Tell us just a little bit about that right now. Well, you know, I have to say you're right. Pastor Rice was the first person that had me on the show when I was a victim of eminent domain here in St. Louis over 10 years ago, uh, back in 2004. So I, my kudos are out to him. I'll always support him because when the national and regular media shut you out, he opened the door. So I do have a heart for his ministry, for souls, the homeless, because it's our duty. You know, if anybody on the street that's homeless or somebody needs something, it, it, it really makes people take a look at us. Why aren't we fixing the problem? Whether it's mental illness, heartbreak, violation, abandonment, it's our job to reach out. We have got to live a selfless life, and it begins with us. So I'm encouraging you, take a look at you, and that, you could be, and that could be you at any day. You can go from being in a home and being homeless. So you know what? Uh, reach out and help people. Once again, tell us about the, the organization that you the outreach coordinator for and how we can reach you and what we can do to help you. The organization is called ONUS, or O-N-U-S Incorporated. Um, you can contact us at 202-817-1331, or you can email us at info at change is on us. Or go to our YouTube channel, go to Facebook, uh, Gerald Sanders, J-E-R-R-O-L-L, S-A-N-D-E-R-S dot com. And I'm telling you, we looking to collaborate and move this thing forward with technology where it is now. I tell people, if we got civil rights and slavery ended and no black folks was in office back then, what is the problem? Why don't we have Euralia into law now? Look and at yourself and ask yourself why and what can you do? If you want to donate, buy a T-shirt, we welcome your support. And you can accept Tax deductible donation. Absolutely. We're a 501c uh, uh, four, uh, four mm -hmm. and we're a nonprofit and we deal with public policy. So we take your donations, take your time. And like you said, if you can give it by the shirt and uh, share, if you can most of all take this, get some young people and take this, your message viral. And we have a go to the YouTube channel, uh, Onus Inc., and or either pull up Go Live Against Rogue Policing Nationwide uh, Legislation. And share that and uh, call us up and let's go. Let's conversate. Okay. We're about out of town. I just want to say oh every goodness. time I see you, Mike, think it's just a pleasure. And, I, and, and I, I get uplifted myself. And thank you so much for visiting with us today. It's an and honor. And each and every one of you, thank you for viewing and supporting the New Life Evangelistic Center. Our address is 
28 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. Our zip code is 63114. Once again, Maxine, thank you so much. And each and every one of you, please have a good day. I'm Bernie Hayes.